everybody. Nice to see you again. Uh, this is our uh, second part of chapter six, social psychology about uh, justify our action. Okay. So in this chapter, we last time in our part one, we talk about, you know, quite often we feel uh, we call cognitive dissonance when our action different from our cell image, right? And or if your action different from what your original thing uh, you plan to do. And we give the term called cog cognitive dissonance, right? Do you have that experience? Do you have the experience? So for example, um, you know, when you are, some people, they are go to the party and they are age under 21, they are not supposed to drink, right? And they, the friend, they are say, hey, drink, drink, drink. And originally, they think they are the good student. And now, because the friend, so they, they try a drink. Now, they start to feel uneasy. And because that's not how they're supposed to, they don't think they are supposed to do that, right? So when you are in counter cognitive dissonance, in our last lecture, we say you do three way, right? You change your behavior, just don't drink, okay? Then you tell friend, sorry, I'm age, under age 21, I'm not supposed to. Or second one, you change your mind, say, well, who say people only can drink? when they are over 21, right? Ridiculous, you know, rule. And third, or you will say, well, even I try to drink, I still a very good student, I get an A on my class, so I should be okay, right? So uh, that's what we, and the third one, if you do that, we call, we give the term, say, self-affirmation. That's mean you add another layer uh, in, in yourself and then persuade yourself, say, you are good, right? Okay, so then when why why people have this kind of cognitive dissonance? The lecture from last time told us one of the reasons because that is you try to match with your self concept, right? If you think you are pretty good people, then the behavior you do you don't feel they are match with whatever your definition about good people, then you tend to have the uh, cognitive dissonance because we always try to protect our self-esteem, right? So then, because that, they, so they did a research last time in our lecture talk about they divide students into three groups. And first group, they told them, you are very good people, you are very good, valuable, and we value you so high. So then you give those students, you know, you try to boost their self-esteem. The second group, then you tell, you you guys actually it's, it's not good so you kind of put them down you know so they have lower self esteem the third group you say nothing okay so after you 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 do this manipulation in your you know research then you send them to a room and you give them exam and the exam actually uh you you put away they actually can they can cheat but at the same time you tell them they are very important to do good in the exam Okay, so with this three group, which group you believe more likely to cheat? Group one or group two or group three? Hmm. According to the, the, the lecture we just talked about, it, more likely group one won't cheat, right? Because you told them they are pretty good, so they have to maintain their, their cell, high cell esteem. And the second group, since they, they have nothing to lose, you say they are not good anyway. So they will be, they, this group tend to cheat. Okay, so that is the, what happens. So actually a lot of time we say, uh, if we want to help people to improve them, uh, uh, have a better behavior, you know, you can change their behavior. You can work very hard to try to change their behavior. But then according to this ch chapter, I think, booster their sales then may be a better way. Because once they feel good about themselves, they more likely do anything good to match with their sales team, right? Okay. Then after that we, we start to talk about 
the source of business. Okay, they have a three source, and we cover the first source in our um, the first um, part of our lecture video, right? So the first source is what everybody remember. It's about your decision. Okay, we make decision all all the time, right? And when you make decision, after decision, they have a, a term called post decision distance. That means when people, after they make decision, they tend to feel distance. Why? Because every decision usually have a two side, right? You want A or you want B, right? Are you going to marry A or you are going to marry B? Are you going to buy this house or that house? Are you going to buy the blue car or red car? Are you going to come to Tiffany University or Ohio State University, right? You always have two sides. And unfortunately, we never can go to two life, right? For me, do I want, I'm working in Taiwan or working in America, right? You only have a one, one life, right? So then when you make decision, we sometimes we have a tendency to say, ha, oh, I wonder what if I go to that university rather than here? What if I buy the house rather than this house? How about if I marry the person rather than this person, right? Okay, now don't worry too much. Why? Because according to psychology, when we make decision, we have a tendency to justify our decision. So you, you may hear people feel, tell you how good for this decision. I really fortunate to marry this person. I really enjoy this house. I really enjoy this book. Okay, so people have that tendency. So we kind of don't have to worry about that, right? But anyway, so just tell you, when you make decision and you have some kind of business, don't worry about it. It'll be over, right? Okay, so now the the second source of uh, business is actually to justify your effort. To justify your effort. Okay, I'm just going to bring you back to this PowerPoint so you can see what are we talking about. Okay, so source of business here say, you know, a lot of time we work very hard in our life to try to get the things we want, okay? And what happened when you get to the part you want and actually you now feel valuable? What can you do? What is your, what's your, um, thought process in that moment, okay? So this, this PowerPoint say, you know, as a lot of you, you work so hard in college because you choose a career and they, they require you to go through this learning process, right? And so you try very hard. Now, if you try very hard and you get into place and they are good, then I don't think we need to justify anything, right? However, if you go to the place, for example, you join the organization and they are somehow boring, okay? You make you feel worthless, okay? It's a worthless organization and you work so hard to get in. Well, what would you, how would you reduce your business? Because you may feel like, why we work so hard for this? What's this, right? And how would you justify your behavior? Now, we have the tendency as a human being called justification of effort. Okay, so the term is mean the tendency for individual to increase their, like, their liking for something they have worked hard to attain. Okay, so... um. Again, just like you make decision to buy which house, okay? So here say, if we work very hard to fight for something you want 
and when you get it, even may not feel as good as your origin original uh, expectation, you are going to justify and you are going to tell people, well, this organization it was not too bad, okay, or not even say not too bad. You will say actually is very good. Okay, so now let's see what happened. Okay, so there is a research, okay, from my Myers in 1959. So you can see that they set a setting like this. Okay, three group. Okay, first group, okay, they have them go to the very extreme hardship. Okay, get to the screening process and it's very demanding and it's not present. The second group is only my 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 uh unpleasant so that's been they need to go through some screening process but not that hard okay and the third part third group well they just let them get in without any process okay so based on the one the idea we just talked about earlier for this three group, three group which group you believe they will like the most for their organization which group one group one or group two or group three. Okay, look at this chart. Okay, I think your idea may be correct, right? You can see that orange line, you know, way high, high, high up, right? And they show for the group that have been go to the severe uh, initiation, that means they work very hard to get into organization they are more likely to rate in their uh, discussion group. They rate him very, very high, okay? That means they believe they are work, work, work very hard for something and they deserve it, okay? Then you can see the second group and third group, the mild in initiation and control, that means they don't even need to try. You know, you see they, they rate in much lower than uh, the severe initiation group. Okay, so that just prove the idea we just talked about. If people work very hard, they will tend to have to try harder to uh, justify their effort. Okay, so any question for this part? Okay, if not, then let's, let's do the, um, let's talk about the third part of source, source of dissonance. Okay, so this is the part is related to if something you don't believe, but there is no good external justification for your insincerity, then what did you do? Right? If you say something you don't believe, but there is no good external justification for whatever you do, it's very easy to feel cognitive dissonance in your end. Okay, now, we talk about the justification, right? And we have the term called external and internal. Okay, so what's external justification mean? External justification, it means you find the reason from outside to explain your dissonance personal behavior that reside outside the individual. Okay, so for example, um, you are uh, go to the organization, we just talk about the boring organization, and you work so hard and you have to get in, right? And you get in. Now, you can help say, well, my teacher require us to join this organization. So even the organization may be very boring, but it's okay because I'm, my teacher say we join this organization, we are going to get extra point. Okay, so I'm going to do. And so this is called external justification. Okay, another hand, if you cannot find any external justification, because first of all, 
your professor not ask you to do that for the class. Secondly, you won't able to get A or get extra point from that join the organization. So now what? What? How do you reduce your cognitive dissonance? Okay. Well, in this case, you may you will need to try find something. And more likely, the people will try to find from their internal side, so their own mind. So we call their internal justification. They will, they will say, well, I think I like this. I always want to join organization, and now it's a chance. Okay, now, so that if they can find that part of explanation, they will feel peace in their mind. Okay. Well, how about if you need to talk about, share some opinion or some attitude that are really different um, from your all original belief? Then what can you do? What, sh what, what, you're, what are you going to do? Okay, so before we start this, okay, let me ask you an example. I always like to ask this example for my student, and I think that's very interesting. Okay, so for example, you are my class. Okay, and I invite a speaker for our class. Okay, then I divide our class to half. Okay, I tell this half of student. Of course, I want that another half here. Otherwise, they will be influence each other. So I privately tell the first half student, say, after you hear this presentation, I want you to go out, tell other students, this is wonderful speaker. And if you say that, I will give you 20 extra points. Okay, then after that, I have this group left. Then I tell one and I tell another group say, Well, we will have a speaker come to our class and when you heard this speech and I want you to go out to other people, this speaker age is very good and you'll get one point, one extra point. Okay. So now I got these two groups settled down. Then when they all come back and the speaker start to talk. <laughs> the speaker is not good. Actually, it's not good. Okay, so I can see the student kind of oh, they feel very boring, you know, and their eye, and then they play their their phone or something. And so, when the speaker finished speech, okay, so then I send the student out, and then I kind of give them a hand, say, remember our our agreement okay so then they, they all go out and then say tell people whatever they have to say and they come back okay of course I give them the point they are supposed to okay so based on our theory or if you think about you are in this situation and now if you are I give you 20 point and then the or I give you one point okay Think about if later, after this class over, of course, they got their point, and then you go 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 back your your dorm, okay, and your roommate asks, hey, how's your class? You say, we have speaker. How's the speaker? Which group you think they tend to tell people their speaker actually is quite good? Which group? Okay. The answer is one dollar group, not one dollar, one extra point group, right? Because for people they got a twenty points, extra point, extra point. That's extra point. Well, they got an external justification. They will kind of say, "Well, I say this because I'm going to get that twenty extra point, and I really need that twenty extra point." So then they don't have to adjust any their uh. In impression about speaker, they can just say, "Oh my gosh, the speaker is just 
not good, right? But then the one dollar, one one point, one extra point. They only get one extra point. They'll be kind of hard to buy their heart to really believe they are good. You know, no, to buy their heart if they don't really feel this is good. So they will, they will do internal justification. They will start to believe actually this speaker is not good. It's not bad at all, or not that bad. Okay, so it makes sense. Do you think that that true? Okay, so actually, uh, we have a research here. So it's similar like the situation I just explained. So let's see what they, what they say about that research. Okay. Okay. So here is the research. Uh, in nineteen fifty nine. Okay, that they, they say um similar. Rather than twenty extra point, they give twenty dollars. Okay, so they have a have college student volunteer to spend an hour performing boring and repeated texts. Okay, half of them will offer twenty dollars. That's called exter large external justification to tell the next volunteer it was very interesting. While the others will offer only um one dollar, and it is very small external justification for lying. Okay, now we just we just talk about my example for you guys. For you, have to go out to tell people they are good speaker or not, if they even they are the boring one. Okay, so this research find out what happened here. Afterward, you see the on the top of this this green side. Okay, the student who had been paid twenty dollars for lying. For saying that the test has been enjoyable, rate the activity at the door and boring experience they were, right? Because what? They got the $20, that is already enough external justification, right? But those who were paid only $1 for saying the test was enjoyable, rate the test significantly more enjoyable. Right? So it's just kind of like what we say. If you just got one dollar and you have to lie, just like if you just got one extra point, you have to lie. It's really not a good justification. So usually people find the internal justification for that. Okay. Now let's think about punishment and self persuasion. Okay. So the question here Does harsh punishment teach adults to want to obey the speed limit? Or does it teach youngest to value honest behavior? So what do you think? Okay, do you think if we if you got a speed ticket, okay, and then they give you very severe punishment, okay, it then make you later follow the speed limit, or if they give you a mild punishment? What do you think? What do you think? Okay. Actually, the research show when people get the harsh punishment, they teach us try to avoid getting caught. So actually, when you get that ticket, next time you may not necessarily reduce speed because you feel you should. Usually, you you reduce because you don't want to get another ticket. So you don't really believe it in your heart. You just try to avoid another ticket. That's it, right? But in contrast, insufficient insufficiency punishment induces dissonance about why one is not engaged in the behavior and inspired. Uh, Business reduced by devaluing the forbidden activity or object. So actually, they say the the mild uh punishment actually they can a, a better a better result. The less severe you make the threat of punishment, the less external justification there is. The less external justification, the greater the need for internal justification. 
Do you think that's true? Did that thing true for you? I think so for me, right? So the point here is say, okay, so here the, is the definition of insufficient punishment here, okay? So that means they don't feel like get enough punishment, right? So then actually, um, they may get a better result. They may get a better result. For example, um, one time I somehow speedy, and then the the police come and police actually just say they ask me lady where are you going and i tell them i told the police actually i'm the teacher and then uh i i teach here ba 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 and then after they check my information they say well just drive carefully well did you see they didn't punish me Instead, they care, in, care about me. They say, drive carefully. And you know what? They get the best result. Because after that, I, I will not speed it. Right? Because I think about their caring. And, and also because they didn't punish me and make me feel somehow guilty. Right? So then I think that for me it's working. How about you? Okay, so they have research here. Okay, so in your PowerPoint, right? This page, hopefully you can see them. Let me try to move closer so you can read it. Okay, so here in the research in 1963, they asked, first of all, they asked each child to rate attractiveness of the several toys okay now after they rate the toys then what they do they say um they say they was not allowed to play okay so they firstly ask them which toy you like and they say you are not allowed to to play then Half of the children will turn. If you play it, you will get my punishment if they disobey. Another half will turn with severe punishment. Okay, then the experimenter left the room for a few minutes. None of the children play with forbidden toy. Hey, actually, they are pretty good, right? Okay, but what happened after they come back? Which children you think were more likely to play? The toy actually is not fun at all. Okay, so we will see here. So according to them, okay, when they return, the children who have received a severe threat continue to rate the forbidden toy as highly desirable or more desirable than they had before the threat. So for the one, they got a severe drink because they can say, I don't, I didn't play because they, they will give a severe punishment. Well, the children in the mild drink condition need the internal justification to reduce their business, right? Because what? They didn't really get severe. So they better say they didn't play because they don't they didn't really like it the interesting right so they rate the forbidden toy as less attract attractive than they had when the experiment designed so you can see they even less likely the toy than original so that's mean their internal justification just start to persuade themselves why need to play? The toy is not fun at all, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so this is the, the chart, right? After doing the severe punishment and the right size after doing my punishment. So then how much they like it? Uh, this group will say, well, they don't like it. Okay, so according to this, we find the mind of punishment actually is a very good power. Okay, so that is a, on the top is the definition of self-persuasion. A long-lasting from 
uh, a long-lasting form of attitude change that result from attempt as sale justification. So you can see the, the chart in the button. Okay, so depend on what do you want to do. If you prefer do the, um, here, the temporarily change here. Okay, then you can do a large reward or severe punishment. Because what? Because they will use extra justification and they will change temporarily. Okay. So you can see that quote here. They say, I do or I, I do or think this because I have to. You know, because the teacher says so, because the police will give me the ticket for this, right? But if you want people to change forever, the suggestion here say small reward or mild punishment actually is better because what they will need internal justification. So they have to come to the mind say, I do all think this because I have convinced myself that it's right. So if you want people to uh, follow the traffic uh, limitation, I think maybe mild punishment may be better than severe punishment. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think this is the same thing here. Okay. Okay. So this H is our last slide. Okay. So justification, good deeds, and uh, harmful acts. I think this is very interesting story here. Uh, the Ben Franklin effect. Okay, so actually this story talk about actually uh Ben Franklin, okay, it's um not with, with one of the the people actually they don't have very good relationship. They don't have very good relationship. But actually um he tried to 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 change people he the person's mind. So then what he did, what he did, he said here, um, he said after he borrowed a book from the person, see, political opponent, right? He returned the book promotely with a warm thank you later. Then do you know what happened? That the person actually become, became more close to him because that thank you notes. Okay, so I think from this uh, story, they give you an idea. So if you have a, a, a friend or somebody, actually you guys don't have very good relationship for some reason. And then if you want to make friend with a person, what do you do? Do something surprise like, like, like Ben Franklin, right? You, you borrow something from them and write them a, a note, right? Say thank you, right? And so surprisingly, um, the person, because they can't get in business, right? They have to justify why you think that, right? So then they will start to change their heart. Say, well, maybe you, you, maybe you are the good person. You are a good person at all. Maybe they are misunderstanding you, right? Okay, so actually this is the whole lecture about uh, justification of uh, action, right? So we said the three results, one is what? It's from decision, right? You make decision, when you make decision, you know, you may have that post-decision business, right? And then we say, well, eventually we are going to find something so you are more likely to to love the one you make decision, right? The second resource source is from um, your 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 action, right? So if you work so hard for your for you for get into the place, you more likely to value that place more than if you go in without any effort, right? But also the condition is if you doesn't matter how you get in, if the organization is good, you don't have cognitive distance. But if only if the place is not good, not as good as you thought, 
then the people get in harder, they will tend to tend to like it more than if not, right? And we say <clears throat> the third is how about if you say something you don't believe, right? And we talk about you know we have to find the external justification or internal justification, right? And so um usually the external justification you less likely to change your mind after that. But if you find the internal justification, you will tend to change your mind, right? And this also relates to the one we say uh, about punishment or re reinforcement, right? So mild punishment or mild reinforcement will more likely to make you change longer, okay? So if you want people to change uh, permanently or have a longer effect, okay? You need to do the mind, okay? Don't do severe, okay? Or if you want to do the uh, reward, don't also do the the um, the mind. Don't do the too extreme because if people got enough external justification, they tend to believe that they do that because you. But if you they get internal justification, that because they don't get enough, so mild punishment or mild rewarding were leading to internal justification and then they were leading to the uh, longer uh, more permanent change right so actually do you think this is interesting okay so uh i think this is the end of our lecture for this chapter and so um hopefully you like it you like it okay so then the same thing like last time now your job is you have to get into the the discussion okay to write down your uh, opinion or your insight or give me the feedback okay and i just change the feedback can be just 150 to 200 words hopefully they're not too too much trouble for you okay and and then also this this chapter already over don't forget to go to Moodle to take your quiz okay and then um any assignment do you make, make sure you double check okay so i think that's we next next time we will talk about uh chapter seven okay so hopefully again um stay stay warm and stay uh health okay and then look forward to see you next time bye bye